Now that's a proper looking stout, isn't it? You never expected it come from Quebec. Oatmeal stout from St. Ambrose of uh, Rue St. Ambrose, Montreal, Quebec. Hmm. You've even got a couple of, uh, couple of award things there. Cool. Good job, Quebec. That's a decent stout. First in on the old mailbag, we have plastic patch. Hmm, not the usual plastic sheet. It's some little surface mount devices of some description. It says here they're 7333-1, which doesn't ring any bells for me at all. 10 pieces, HT7333-A, three, 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 uh, HT7333, 3.3 3, 3 volts, SOT89, low power consumption, LDO, voltage regulator. Ah, low dropout regulators. Okay, uh, from Alice, 110, yeah, Haven't bought anything from Alice for a while. Interesting. Uh, I paid uh, $1.44 Canadian for the 10 of these with, of course, free shipping. Let's just have a quick peek at the data sheet. Uh, low quiescent current, 3.5 microamps. Input voltage up to 12 volts. That's interesting. I have to keep that in mind. Um, can't use it for an automotive use, for instance, because that'll be 13 to 14 volts coming in. And that series has a bunch of different voltages. I've got the 33, which is the 3.3. Quarter amp. That's also useful to keep in mind. Dropout voltage, there it is. 170 millivolts above the output voltage, basically. Which is not bad. So if, if I'm doing a 3.3 volt output, all I really need is about 3.5 volts in. Which is going to be mostly um, an 18650 or something like that, right? If I want a regulated 3.3 3 volt, out, 3 .3 volt output... That should do nicely. All right, next we have something hidden underneath the Canada Post sticker. Buggers. Right, it's a surprise. Still a surprise. Capacitors. Hmm. You. Those look like used or reclaimed capacitors. They've got hot snot or something on them from their previous life. Well, I hope I bought them as used capacitors. We got here 30, fa 30 farad, 30 farad, 2.7 volts. These are super capacitors. But why are they used ones? I try really hard not to buy used electronics on eBay. As you never know. Ah, that stuff's kind of ugly. At the risk of carving into it. 2.7 volt 30 F farad capacitor. HM super capacitor. Electronic components. Audio parts. I got these ones from Timely Rain 001. I bought five of them for six dollars and forty cents Canadian. And it does in fact say that they are used. I didn't notice that. So it doesn't say much else about them down here other than the voltage and current or the voltage and uh, capacitance reading temperature oh, minus 40 to plus 65. So basically any place that a human is going to want to be. Okay. What do we know about supercapacitors? Turns out I don't know very much about them. This is the first time I've ever played with them before, which is Partly why I got the cheapest ones I could find, because I'm not sure, other than just playing with them, what I'm going to use them for. It says here that they are a high capacity capacitor. Mm hmm. Much higher capacitance than normal capacitors, but much lower voltage limits. They can accept and deliver much charge much faster than batteries and tolerates more charge discharge cycles. Comparison with other storage technologies. A little bit wider temperature range than lithium ion batteries. Hell of a lot more uh, charge discharge cycles. So to be a super capacitor, they claim you want to be in the 100 to 12,000 farad range. 
these ones that I got are 30 farads, so they technically are in the double layer capacitor memory backup class. I guess that's probably why these ones uh, have are, are used. It's probably where they came out of. Recycle your electronics, kiddos. This is where it ends up, back on eBay and sold to schmucks like me. Anyway, there's a lot of good information here on uh, how it's constructed and everything. If you want to go deep, this is, of course, the Wikipedia article. So I have been charging this one. I just chose one at random that had relatively long leads on it. I set my power supply here to, let's just turn him off, to 2.7 volts because... You really don't want to charge these things over their rated voltage, otherwise, kaboom. And I charged them at about 250, 260 milliamps. So it didn't take too, too long to charge it up. And as you can see, the current has already dropped down to 30, 40 milliamps. And when I turn that off, it settles in at about 2.4 volts. So it hasn't taken the full voltage, but it's pretty close. So let's uh, see if we can light an LED with that. Where's my other wire here? I should be able to. Yeah, obviously I can. That makes sense, and it's fairly bright. However, we are starting to slowly discharge our, uh, our supercapacitor. It'll probably last for quite a while with this. And actually... Yeah, I think I'm going to just clip that LED onto the capacitor and then carry on. Next in, we have display AP71 star 1, which is, of course, not helpful at all. Ah, it's one of these little LCD displays. Where do I have another one of these deployed at the moment? There we go, I've got one on my little cheesy thermometer board here. Um, so that is a, was it, 16 columns by two lines display, I think. Um, and this one comes without the little I2C backpack on it, but that's okay, because I got some in a previous mailbag, you may recall. If I remember, I'll put a link up there. Um, so this one, well, you've got two options for talking to these things. Let me just zoom in here. So you can either uh, connect up voltage, ground, uh, the read rate, the enable, and at least four of the data pins and the backlight uh, to your Arduino and have it talk to that. Or you can use one of these little I2C backpacks on it solder it on back there making sure you don't short anything out and then you can talk to it with i2c which is just scl and sda in voltage and ground and this does the serial to parallel deconversion this little magic chip back here sometimes they come with them sometimes they don't um i happen to order this one i think i probably got this one cheap at auction without the backpack so i just ordered some backpacks cheap at auction as well well sometimes you don't mind just doing it the hard way if you're doing it quick and dirty or something and if you don't if you don't have the pins to spare Ooh, blue new blue background i2c iic twi 1602 serial lcd module display for arduino no, no, it is not any of these things. It is not serial. It is not I2C. Notice that they have two different ones in the picture. One of them, this one here, the top one, is the one that I got. The one on the bottom is the one with the thing, so with the backpack solder onto it. And again, they're showing two different ones in the pictures so I guess when I paid two dollars and 39 cents with no shipping from warehouse 87 I'm guessing I thought that I was getting the I2C one since it says I2C right there oh well uh, 
it doesn't matter so there's there's the difference in price 259 versus 357 for the uh, for the one that actually does or 340 for the one that actually does come with the little backpack on it like I said it doesn't matter because I've got both I've got the little backpack pieces anyway we do our best to make the photo more close to real items mm-hmm so you show both LED still going 1.93 and dropping I'll just leave that over there uh, next item Stainless steel tweezers. I remember ordering tweezers. I don't remember them being stainless steel though. Oh, these are these fancy uh, ceramic ones with the that are uh, static free and electrically insulating and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those meet up quite nicely. And being... That doesn't feel like ceramic. That feels like a hard nylon. If it was ceramic, it would make a much more of a clicky noise. Hmm. Springing. Let's see what this one is. Oh, maybe it is actually ceramic. Yeah. If that was nylon. Wow. Okay. So that is some kind of ceramic stuff. Not nylon. If it was nylon, I'd be able to peel it off or some kind of plastic. Let's grab some random surface mount components here. Okay, so that's... Is that 603 or 402? Regardless, I'm gripping that pretty hard and... That's nice. Let's see what else we can grab out of my mystery box here okay that is that in focus that picks up fairly well what about the other one it doesn't open up quite as far and it doesn't have quite as sharp a points on it the curvier one also doesn't quite meet up does it No, but it still works. Anti-static tweezer, ceramic tip, stainless steel tweezer, fine point tip tool from Stunner 1975. I got the number one black and the number three black. Um, currently they're going for door 99 and dollar eighty nine. I paid a dollar eighty and a dollar eighty nine when I bought them. Material stainless steel and ceramic, twelve to thirteen centimeters. Color as picture shows. One piece ceramic tweezer. So high temperature ceramic is difficult, smooth, and heat resistant. Okay. Uh, can successfully complete an operation in high magnetic field, especially applied to acid. High temperature welding. Ceramic is an material is an excellent oxidative hard to production uh, whatever will not generate static and not contain magnetism resistance to heat up to 1600 degreesers wow so yeah that's why i bought them for soldering they're not going to wick the heat away they're not going to have the solder stick to them they're not going to weld themselves in place they're electrically insulative and they're not going to melt like those uh, plastic ones that I bought previously. Yeah, the capacitor is down to 1.884. There's just barely a glow still on there. And oh, there you can see it. I can see it. Can you see that? Just barely. Anyway, I'll let him keep... Once that gets down to about the 1.6, 1.7, which is the forward voltage of that, it's not going to discharge anymore. So at that point, I'm going to have to discharge it with a resistor. The last thing in, expansion board module. Always a popular choice. Reasonable packaging so far. Oh. Oh, these are these linear potentiometers, slide potentiometers. 
This calls them slide potentiometers, and I got two of them. So who was playing with these things previously? I think Gadget Reboot was one of the guys, and lots of people have them, but... So basically, there's... It's two different channels, two different potentiometers in one. There's OTA and OTB, uh, VCC and ground, VCC and ground for each one. And you can see that on the back that there's the two different sections. There's the one fixed terminal for the A and B section at each end. And the other fixed terminal, which is on the ground plane, and then the wiper for each section. So I don't remember what the impedance of these things is, but that should be pretty easy to figure out with a meter. 9.86k, so that's going to be a 10k pot. Okay, and actually, let's just... This is where an analog meter comes in real handy to watch varying resistances. So 10k, 9, 8, 7, 3. Ten k double single linear slide potentiometer module for Arduino electronic block. I got the 10k linear slide. There is also the gang of two individual ones, but this is the one that I got, 228 per each, and I got a pair of them from Good Module. Somebody who I've bought from many times in the past. Yeah, so it's calling them linear slide, but I don't know if that means the actual um, taper of the resistive element, or if that just means it goes in a line. You can never be quite too sure with these translations. Okay, so that LED has gone dark to my eye at 1.8 volts. And the capacitor is just not really dropping anymore at 1.8 volts. Which makes sense because the diode is not conducting and therefore not drawing any current out of it anymore. So I'll just discharge it through my big block of ohmite here. And that should drop off fairly quickly. Well... Actually, no, it won't, because that's 2.5K. I wonder if I've got a resistor that's a little bit more reasonable for discharging that in a reasonable time frame. 100 ohms. Let's use 100 ohms to discharge it. That'll probably work better. I, mean, I, I could use a more normal-sized resistor, because this thing's not going to be drawing... All that much current but there now he's discharging at a reasonable speed all righty there is today's mailbag monday items shipping times the bag of super ish capacitors took 25 days to get here the anti-static tweezers took five weeks the slide potentiometers took six weeks the display took one month exactly, and this little package of 3-volt regulators took five weeks. So, thank you, as always, for watching. If you have any comments, questions, complaints, um, curiosities, suggestions, leave her all down in the comments. Let's chat about this stuff. It's, it's always fun to talk to you guys and uh, see what's on your mind. Um, and there's always some of you that correct me because I always make a few mistakes. I never promised to be uh, perfect on this. I'm just hacking around here. Um, what? Oh, yeah. Uh, Patreon people. Thank you very much, as always, for helping me stop... Uh, helping me not go broke doing this. And thanks for your suggestion. I'll see if I can come up with uh, something that's actually cool and worthy with these things. Even though they're not actually super capacitors. They're just kind of... Capa big-ass capacitors. So 2.7 volts, um, what can I do with them? Uh, I can get about 12 volts if I put them in series, or I get a whole bunch more current if I put them in parallel. I don't know, have to see. Maybe, I'll, maybe I will use them as a battery pack or something. That might be interesting. I know Julian Eilert's doing a lot of that kind of stuff. These are a lot smaller than the ones that he's playing with. He's, he's got some big ones the size of my beer here. Uh, I don't think I want to go that way unless I have an actual application where I want to use capacitor charging, which I could do. You never know. Is that enough rambling? Yeah, I'm, I'm 
I'm getting tired of talking. I, I want to focus on this now. And our friends from Quebec did a pretty good, uh, pretty good oatmeal stout. I'm impressed. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you later. <laughs>